Then I can't Welcome visit. to the joint workshop between the Tecumseh Public Schools and the city of Tecumseh. That being said, I will call this workshop to order. Would you all please rise, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. City Clerk Horn, would you take the roll for City Council, please? Here. 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 Okay. We do indeed have a quorum present from City Council. Executive Assistant to the Superintendent Moore, would you take the roll for the school board? Here. 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 Okay. We do have a quorum present from the school board. Before we can proceed with this workshop, we do need to approve the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. The motion was made by Member Nago. The second was made by Trust. Was it? By, oh, excuse me. Member, Member Harmon. Member Nago made the motion. Member Harmon seconded that motion. And that would be to approve this evening's agenda. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, those in favor of the motion, yes. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion is carried. We do indeed have ourselves an agenda. <clears throat> At this time, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you here this evening. I know council, and I certainly speak for council, and I certainly would not try to speak for the school board, but I think I'm correct in saying that they also welcome your attendance. Not only those of you who are here in the audience, but those who are watching remotely. That being said, I want to also tell you that you will have, those of you in the audience will have two opportunities to address this group. The first will be for items that are on the agenda, which is item number six. The second will be for items that are not on the agenda, which would be item number eight. And we are now at item number six. This is public comment regarding any item that is on this evening's agenda. If there's any of you in the audience that wish to address this group, this is your opportunity. One of the things I would like you to do though, when you do address this group is to give your name and your address. And this would be for the benefit of Clerk Horn and executive assistant to the superintendent Moore. Anyone? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Stimson. Questions, comments from Mr. Stimson? This is really more of a comment session, but certainly we this could be a unique situation where we would perhaps have questions that we will address those at a later time in this schedule. Well, thank you, Mr. Stimson. Who else would like to speak? Hearing none, let's move on to item number seven. These are the workshop topics. And first up are the Building Futures Committee. This would be the bond proposal. The presenter for this will be Superintendent Hilderly and his staff. Superintendent Hilderly. Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you, Mayor Baker. I want to thank uh, not only Mayor Baker, but uh, the three managers follow for helping us uh, set this evening up. Uh, great format, uh, wonderful topics for us to uh, present tonight. And just very happy to have uh, this group of people together to talk about the future.
future of our great community. So thank you for everyone uh, who is present as well. Uh, just a couple of things I want to bring to everybody's attention. If you haven't been in this space before, there are restroom facilities in the rear underneath the flag uh, on both sides. We also have some refreshments in the back, uh, some water and snacks. Please help yourself during the presentation at any time. Um, my presentation tonight, well, first of all, I want to mention uh, along with you this evening is Eduardo Juan from PNP. Eduardo uh, will be here as a resource to answer questions uh, that you will probably have uh, after my presentation. And then I will take uh, the time to draw attention to the frequently asked questions document that is provided at each of the uh, council and board members seats. Uh, many of the things that you may be wondering uh, by the end of this presentation are, are answered very completely in that document. Certainly anything else that you may be wondering, we're happy to uh, entertain questions when I uh, am done. We have a unique opportunity, as school districts sometimes do. We have Currently, 7.2 mills of levy bond debt in our school district. That bond debt was accrued through a variety of projects in the late 90s and early 2000s that included the construction of where we are tonight, to come see high school, many of its athletic facilities, and the surrounding buildings improvements to those structures as well. Over the time of those bonds, they have expired and will expire uh, within the next year. So the district has an opportunity with zero tax increase to uh, the community to recapture that uh, 7.2 bills and generate about $75 million for further infrastructure improvements to our program and to our facilities. And I will summarize those for you this evening. First, let's talk about the timeline. As with many things, the pandemic interrupted our timeline uh, on two separate occasions. However, going back to the uh, winter of 2020, TMP architecture conducted assessments of all the district buildings to identify building infrastructure and program deficiencies. Shortly after that, a committee named the Building Futures Committee, often referred to as the BFC, which was comprised of parents, teachers, coaches, administrators, and community members at large attended several meetings, most of them in the virtual setting. I believe that we did have two face-to-face uh, -face meetings uh, along the way. The goal was to prioritize mm -hmm. items that would be in line with the district's vision, and again, that would address our program needs. Through that process, the district uh, conducted a survey excuse me, survey to test the community's uh, perception of a potential bond program, and that gave us a lot of good information about what we should and should not include in an eventual program. Culminating on November 8, 2021, the Board of Education supported a May 3rd bond proposal for $75 million. That recommendation was brought to the Board by Building Futures Committee, which decided unanimously on the program uh, implementation that they had worked on. And again, I would like to stress that this initiative is a zero mill increase to the current bond millage rate. The focus areas for the bond 2020 or to provide future-ready learning environments for all of our students and teachers, identify and implement operational efficiencies and infrastructure upgrades, enhance safety and security 
district-wide enhanced program opportunities for all students pre-kindergarten through 12th grade. And again, do all of this without increasing our village rate. Out of the work that the Building Futures Committee did came a variety of different projects, and you'll see that it does involve all levels of our program. First and foremost would be the construction of a new upper and lower elementary school. And if you recognize your bird's eye views of Tecumseh, you'll see that this orange structure and the X configuration is on the Tecumseh acres. Mike, all right. I get extra points for doing that on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> Must be a geography teacher. The project would then also provide uh, flexible furniture, instructional technology upgrades, reconfiguration of the auto and bus loop drop offs, new staff and visitor parking areas. Uh, student PE play fields and playgrounds, and new security systems, cameras, buzzer systems, and additional security cameras. Uh, this is also not on the presentation, but for our tech guy there in the back, Devin, he asked this question that would also cover the uh, new fiber optic line that would need to be run to cover a, a, a facility of this size. Currently, we have a building on that site that serves about 300 students. And when I made this presentation to my directors, that was one of the things that Devin wanted to know. So I wanted to be sure to point that out. Uh, this project does include the costs for running that additional data line. You'll notice, um, and I identified this property as the Tecumseh Acre site. And possibly I can put it up in my cursor. So, when you're looking at that, uh, you will identify this area as Adrian Street on the uh, west side of the property, and to the east side of the property would be Union Street, Patterson Street here to the north. This site uh, layout has an auto loop that comes uh, from the south and a bus loop that comes up Patterson Street. This is a concept drawing, and I'm going to show you another uh, concept drawing. And, and at the end, I'm hoping that uh, there will be some discussion uh, from both groups about which of the two concepts would suit the needs best of the neighborhoods in that area. So again, 
this particular concept has all of the traffic running from the north, the south, and the west. This slide shows the same uh, building location, but this time has a bus loop that comes off of Union Street, and that way we have traffic flow from four different locations. A service drive from the south, a parent loop coming from Patterson Street and emptying onto Adrian Street, and bus traffic coming and going off of Union Street. I was surprised during this process. I had a conversation uh, with uh, Dan in the city, and, and I asked him about the right of way through this piece of property, which is in the, the northeast border of this uh, picture. Uh, there are two well houses on that property that are uh, property of the city. I was surprised to find out that Tecumseh Public Schools owns the land. They did not know that, and most of the committee did not uh, realize that. That put the light bulb off uh, where we wanted to consider coming off of Union Street, accessing that property and using it as a way to disperse traffic to four different directions coming into that property, which I know um, members of the community in, in those neighborhoods would, would potentially want that to happen. Uh, I know that there are some setback requirements in terms of how close we can come to those well houses, but uh, in the design process, we feel comfortable with, with how far we are away from those items. So later on, I'll hope to have uh, some feedback from you on which of those configurations seems like the way to go when we get to the point where there are promotional materials uh, as part of this presentation. Here's some renderings of the types of learning spaces that could potentially be designed in a 21st century elementary school. Flexibility, colors, security, and access for all of our students is the primary focus. The middle school building, or if you've been around long enough, the high school building. <laughs> Of you. The concept with the middle school is primarily to look at safe and secure entries. Um, because I was principal of that building for 15 years, I know that there are 27 different ways to get into that building through a door. So, trying to identify how we can make that uh, campus more secure and safe for our staff and our students. Uh, was important in the, in the design process. Again, new flexible furniture, uh, new instructional technology, uh, media center remodeling and, and actually relocating within the building, office remodeling and relocation. I think the most significant thing, again, having lived there for 15 years, um, would be the new driveway parking lot and playground area. Right now and for many years, we have made do with what was there in terms of infrastructure. We, we section things off with cones and we try to direct people to go certain ways. At some points, gates have been locked off so that you couldn't go a certain way and now they're open so that we can go that certain way. Um, but in the design process, the site plan gets a lot of reworking so that everything is purposeful and safe and secure for the individuals who we're going to be uh, accessing that campus. Uh, another item that's um, on that property is the swimming pool, the community pool. Um, that, if, if you've paid attention at all, um, you know needs lots of upgrades. Um, its air quality handling system is over double past its uh, age limit, and we continue to patch it back together and, and make it work. But it needs to be addressed, and it's an expensive item. To take it out of our operating budget would take probably three years worth of saving uh, to tackle. So that's part of this uh, program. 
Also, the boiler system that helps um, uh, heat the pool. Currently, we have a single boiler system. It's recommended to have a double boiler system. Boilers are about a half million dollars a piece. So, uh, implementing two is also something that uh, our board would struggle with if we're part of um, projects that we have to take out of our operating budget. Uh, and then other upgrades uh, to the swimming area, also the, the ceiling, the, the roof uh, infrastructure, because it, it's a corrosive environment, there are, there are things that need to be addressed that, that people just don't see. Also, a new security system. Currently, there is no buzzer system to enter that pool area. It's a blind entryway and it needs to have an upgrade uh, on that end. Uh, the north entry to the middle school also is a, an access point currently uh, for kids who ride the bus. But again, it has no uh, camera system or buzzer entry system and needs to be upgraded. Uh, in the design plan, there's a vestibule that uh, allows the students to come in and uh, be out of the elements in a way that they can not access the building now. Here's some uh, conceptual pictures. Again, these are not our facilities, but they are concepts of the sort of design that uh, we would hope to put into an eventual program. Here at the high school, our newest building, but going on 21 years old, and uh, dealing with uh, aspects of education that weren't around even uh, 20 years ago. We would be proposing to add a new auxiliary gym. Um, when, this, when, this, when this gym was built, um, the basketball seasons were not combined. Uh, volleyball was a fall sport. Uh, now that all of the JV freshman and varsity volleyball pro programs are competing at the same time, gym floor space in the winter is premium. And uh, having the auxiliary gym is something that would help relieve that problem. A new music group. This is exciting uh, for a couple of different reasons. Uh, also not around when this building was constructed, we didn't have an orchestra program. We had a band and we had choir in our music program. And now we have uh, the addition of an orchestra program, and they do not have a dedicated uh, teaching space. During that 20 years, the Elizabeth Wilson Foundation and the Friends of the Tecumseh Orchestra have been working hard to fundraise, and at last count, have nearly $600,000 that they would like to support this program and add 5,000 square feet down this hallway uh, to the music program dedicated specifically to uh, orchestra. It would not be a performance space, it would be a teaching and learning space uh, for orchestra students. But that is a $1.5 million project that would potentially have uh, that donation taken off by the Wilson Foundation and the Friends of the uh, Orchestra. At the high school, we would also have new security systems, cameras, buzzers, uh, additional uh, security on uh, up and down all the hallways, and uh, upgraded new instructional technology. In the athletic program, new outdoor team locker room space. If you can imagine in your mind, uh, when you come through the main gate on the north end of that facility, off to the right, there are usually middle school kids running around, throwing <laughs> football, chasing each other. That particular space, now you know what I'm talking about, that particular space would be a location for a team room and locker facility that would, would not service only football. We also have lacrosse uh, that, that participates on that field, soccer, um, and, a, and a few other sports at the, the community level that uh, those locker facilities would um, be able to access. If you've been to a, a game recently, uh, you know that the teams typically come and go from what we call the hitting barn, which is across the driveway up the hill a little bit, 
Um, so relatively inconvenient, and uh, the master plan of the athletic facilities does include a, a team room and locker facility on that site. Uh, upgrading the turf field for all of the sports that participate on that field. Again, not, not simply uh, school-based, but, but community-based as well. Uh, lots of activities that go on in that field. Uh, its lifespan has been exceeded by a few years and it needs to be replaced. And that's a million dollar uh, venture to try to take out of your operational budget. Again, uh, this opportunity gives us a chance to uh, not take it out of the program, uh, but take it out of uh, bond proceeds. Uh, we would then relocate that uh, chaos area or play area uh, to the south end of the bleachers uh, to give those kids an opportunity. And then we would also be able to access uh, some new upgraded athletic equipment for that facility. So here's the math. <clears throat> the estimated bond costs for these programs include uh, about $47 million for the elementary school. Uh, the nice part about that is uh, because we own the land, we don't have to allocate any of the resources to uh, uh, buying any property. Middle school upgrades that also include uh, the community pool are just over $16 million. The high school upgrades coming in at just over $6.5 million. Athletic upgrades around $2.2 million. There are demolition costs in the program of nearly uh, $3 million. Those demolition costs would be obviously for the building that is on the Tecumseh Acres site currently. And then we uh, have in the budget demolition money for the Herrick Park campus, the Patterson campus, and uh, the, the, the Sutton building. Now, that doesn't mean that the program has already determined that demolition will be the fate of those sites or those buildings. It just means that we are prepared if we have to, to take those buildings down. There are several opportunities that come to mind, and I'm sure that you have some in your minds as well. Um, I believe that it would be unnatural to uh, see the Sutton building uh, taken over by the LISD because it's adjacent to a property that they already own. I think that it's feasible to think that either Herrick Park or Patterson could be repurposed as either a senior center or uh, a living center of some sort. It, it could be property, uh, when I think of that, that uh, property that Patterson sits on, where I'm a developer, I would be very interested in um, a piece of property centrally located on a high value street in the city um, that has the, the creek running through the background. Uh, so developers could get interested in that. And if those things happen, then that $3 million that is currently uh, budget for demolition would go back into the program and could be used for uh, some of the other upgrades that we've already talked about. Uh, then a small interest earnings uh, is figured in, and the final uh, figure comes to $75 million, all of which is generated in the 7.2 bills that are currently being levied by the school district. Again, 7.2 currently, and the millage rate would continue to be 7.2 years in the future. Some important dates. Uh, by April 29th, uh, that's the final day to register to vote by mail. After May 2nd, uh, you must be in person uh, to vote. May 3rd is the election day. Registration can be done uh, in person at the clerk's office uh, until May 3rd. Registration of the absentee applications are available online, and all of the voting, we're told, by our clerk would take place at the AJ Smith Rec Center on the north side of town. More information uh, can be sought uh, on our website and primarily through me at this point, a 
using that phone number or that email address. There will be, <coughs> at some point, an advocacy campaign. The school districts cannot tell people which way that we want them to vote, however. We can give them information, and, and we can tell them all, all the great things that we would plan to do uh, with their money should they allow us to continue levying those notes. That's all for the formal presentation. Again, you have a frequently asked questions document that is very thorough, I believe, uh, that's been put together and, and vetted by uh, not only myself and the administration, but uh, original members of the uh, Building Futures Committee. So at this time, myself, Eduardo would be happy to answer questions that you might have. Uh, Mayor Baker, I don't know at this point if we would entertain questions from the gallery, but uh, I'll let you decide that. Well, certainly, Superintendent Hillary. Let's start with the board members and council members, and certainly if there are questions from the gallery, I think this would be the appropriate time to do it. Uh, yes. President Rebeter. Yeah, I just have, thanks, Rick, for that presentation. I have one comment that... Uh, I think it's important, you know, uh, the Building Futures Committee looked at, it was five or six different scenarios. Uh, well, it was nine. Nine, okay. And, nine I, and, I, and, you know, we covered that in one of our board meetings. And I think that's really important. This just wasn't, you know, an effort to let's build a new building, right? They looked at taking the buildings that existed. They, took the, they looked at what could be done. And uh, nine scenarios is almost overwhelming. But that's really important that this group, uh, how many people was close to 40, I think? What was there were, there were about 40 members. Yeah. Uh, I don't know that we ever had all 40 on the same call, uh, but there, there was input, input from, from 40 different people. Yeah. And, and as you mentioned, uh, through those meetings, uh, TMP provided us with, with a total of nine different types of programs. Some of them looked at our current facilities in terms of renovation. And some of them involved uh, different types of new facilities or large uh, expansions, uh, including one of them had uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade being attached to this building on this property, uh, and then uh, K five elementaries. There were concepts at each of the elementary buildings that included uh, adding additional gym space so that we weren't using the multi-purpose space as is now uncommon in new uh, elementary school programming. So the committee did look at many different things and tried to make sure that whatever was decided was stretching the tax dollar the most efficient way that it could. And, and that's what culminated in this proposal. Thank you. Trustee Moore. Yeah, I had a question. Um, I don't know if we were working on it separate, but was there a, a, a concession slash bathroom also on the athletic, on the other side where the baseball soccer fields are? There, there was in the discussion um, a few times we talked about potentially adding um, a restroom facility that is between softball, baseball, and soccer. And that would be one of the things that if we were able to save some money from the demolition, that would be a first option uh, add-on later on. Right, and we would develop a list of what the highest priority things were. To Correct. When, when, when the district moves to a design phase, that's when you start making decisions about um, what ifs, uh, what the current costs of construction are going to be, uh, those sorts of things. I think that, that, uh, concession stand and restroom facility out there is one of those what ifs. Trustee Brooks. Rick, um, <clears throat> excuse me. We talked about several, and I, I think it's really important tonight for you to bring it up um, with this forum, uh, how to continue honoring the heritage of the schools that we would be demoing. Um, could you touch on that as well as some of the things we've looked at uh, that would be cost effective, more cost effective for the district with this outline. I'm glad you mentioned that. Uh, it's no accident that the elementary building configuration ends up with four separate hallways. Uh, 
I think it's the belief of uh, the membership of the committee that in no small way, each of those areas would be designated the Hare Park hallway, the Patterson hallway, the, the uh, Sutton entry, the Tecumseh Andrews, so and so. There, there are so many things that the group talked about. Uh, repurposing a flagpole from one building from one side, taking bricks from one area and putting them in a common area. Uh, several different ideas uh, because we do know that our community is rich with tradition and have many people who support the historical names for our buildings. And we wouldn't want that to be forgotten on uh, a project like this. So uh, again, design phase would very much cover making sure that um, we were uh, paying attention to the heritage of, of the company. Thank you, Superintendent Tillerly. Member Wimple. Ron, Ron Wimple from the city of Tecumseh. If this bond was renewed in May, how long would it run? I believe that the uh, date that it would expire would be in uh, 2053 would be the end of the bond. Um, it would diminish over time because not all of these bonds are, are the same age. So uh, Possibly Eduardo could, could talk a little bit more about that, but I, I know that uh, 53 is the date that it's dropped at zero. Okay. Yeah, we, we do have a group that we work with uh, that has financials. Um, I, our, our board has been provided that document, but certainly if members of the council would like to have that provided, we can also share it with you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, let's go to, if you're okay with this, Superintendent Hillary, right. we will go to the audience. Go right ahead. Superintendents a full two years of learning to understanding all of school finance. So I'll just try to summarize it. Um, for years and years, property taxes funded local schools basically alone. In 1994, with Proposal A, the state sales tax increased two cents. Now is the primary source of funding schools. All of your property tax dollars now go to Lansing and they get redistributed into the school bond fund and it goes everywhere around the state. Uh, this year our funding was at a level of $8,700 per student. This particular funding would only be for upgrades to facilities. It wouldn't have anything to do with any teachers or uh, buying books and paper. The only thing that you can do with a bond program is improve your facilities. And the operational money is what comes in in the formula that includes the FTE, which is the student count, how many kids go to school year, multiplied times that $8,700. So that's what helps us teach students in the buildings. And this particular project, the 75 million, would only go toward these facility upgrades and be paid for separately. Is that a clear enough answer? Yes, sir. 53 is the drop head. Any other questions from our gallery? Eduardo knows this better than I do, but I know that when you propose a project like this, that 
the state government only allows you to project so far into the future. <coughs> so, Eduardo, you want to give us more information? Yeah. Uh, so, Thank you. Member Wimple. Again, Ron Wimple from the city of Tecumseh. I understand the 7.2 mills would not be a tax increase as of today's tax assessments. But as the assessments go up between now and the year 53, wouldn't that be, in fact, a tax increase based on the assessed values of individuals' homes? Yes, home values uh, will fluctuate, hopefully always going forward. Um, and that is, you're correct, that the, um, the assessment on your home multiplied times the bills is what determines the, uh, the taxable value. So, yes, tax, the amount of tax paid could and probably will increase. What won't increase as a result of this vote is the amount of bills that are assessed by the district. So you know, we wouldn't, wouldn't want people to believe that their taxes will never go up. What we're saying is the, the level that the school is uh, levying, the 7.2 mills, won't increase. Home values will increase over time. Uh, and, and that factors into the amount of taxes that they pay. But it won't increase as a result of this vote. Thank you. Thank you. Who else? Yes, sir. So you're saying because of the assessment of the house values go up, we're going to collect more money. So could we pay the debt faster? Is that what you're... Right. Because if you, if you added more taxable properties uh, within the district, that, that could affect this. Yes, it could. Okay, manager Swallow. Thank you. Uh, uh, this is real quick. Uh, it depends on how bond is up, obviously. Uh, for example, growth, which is the city's assets, property values go up, our village would actually go down. Uh, so the only thing that is going to be a bond. Uh, so it depends on how, obviously, bonds are approved and how it's up. 
Thank you, Manager Swallow. Who else? Trustee Simpson. <clears throat> so what happens if we have a 2008 again and housing prices crash <coughs> and then the school, we can't make the payment on the bond? What happens at that point? Uh, if the, the tax base shrinks, <coughs> then uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Swallow, then, then the existing tax base would, would absorb that? Or would it just extend longer than 53? Mm -hmm. okay. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Thank you. Well, I, I would first say that my hope would be that addressing our facilities would uh, not only attract uh, school choice families, but <clears throat> I think more importantly, retain families who live within our community. Um, and that would be uh, one of the goals. Uh, and not just because the buildings are new, but because they allow us to address programming needs that are best for kids and learning. I think that that's the way that you attract families, is to be able to say that we can uh, reach the needs of all of the students using facilities that are built for 21st century instruction. So that's first and foremost. Um, and I think you also have to understand the competitive environment that schools um, have entered into. Clinton is working on upgrades to their facilities. They passed a $32 million bond um, in their community, and they're, they're upgrading their facilities. Westfield is getting ready to put together a program. Uh, Celine to our northeast in the last five years has put a lot of money into their uh, facilities. Uh, schools around the county will continue to look at ways to develop their facilities. and. Uh, it's important for a school district because of the opportunity that we have to look at that money and understand 
understand that if you're not moving forward, you're getting passed by. And it's just staying with what we have um, isn't necessarily always the best choice, especially when you have an opportunity to make improvements without increasing your, your uh, bond debt. And I think, the, as I pointed out, the beneficial part of this is that it, it has something for every grade level and a variety of interest groups as well. Um, music edition, PE upgrades, the athletic upgrades, the, the lower upper elementary, uh, designed specifically for their teaching and learning. Uh, there's absolutely something for each of the levels. Thank you. Trustee Tomlin. Hi, Mary Tomlin. I'd like to say to your point, that is something of great concern for me. That's a reason why I wanted to serve on the board. Um, I feel like we are working very hard. We had a very successful strategic planning meeting here a couple Saturday, Saturdays ago with many members of our community staff and most importantly students. And one thing that really stuck out in my mind at that strategic planning was um, we had people from the Michigan Association School Board, um, MASB, come down and facilitate it. And they had done focus groups with our students. And I thought that that data was extremely important and valuable. And we had a time to dive into that, my fellow board members and, then, and the people who were at that committee. And it really, one thing that really struck me, having lived here for a very long time and taught was how um, how much the students felt valued as students, how much they respected the administration. They had granted that there had been some stressful times of late, but they felt that their community was really something that they could count on, and they were proud to be from Tecumseh. Several, several of the surveys helped me out. You know, those of you who were there, Brian, you were there. Some of them really, they, they laid out that they felt like this community supports them and wraps around them in terms of a lot of different things, job shadows and opportunities. And I feel like with, with that strategic plan, and I know that some of us sit on a curriculum review committee, we're working really hard to hear the voice of the students. One of the students, or the, one of the things that came from the student group was they wondered why they did not have a seat at the board. They knew that they may not be able to vote, but they wanted to have a governing body that was able to regularly come and be an active member, just like we're sitting here today, of the board. And I think that that was heard loud and clear, and that will do a lot, and probably something that I don't hear in any other schools. Thank you. 
Who else? Yes, um, Member Riddle. What is the timeline for this whole project? Uh, the, the vote is in May, um, and about 10 minutes after that passes, we will start the sign <laughs> work. Uh, so that's really an exciting part for me. I'm trying not to, to, to get too far into the future, but um, having an opportunity to design those spaces and, and work in small groups to uh, meet the needs of, of students in the future is a really, really exciting idea. Uh, I can go by comparison right now. Uh, I know that in Pass uh, it will be a year ago, November, and they're just about ready to start putting out things for bid. So, the design process for something like this is anywhere from 12 to 18 months um, because you pull together committees of stakeholders. We, we might even have another forum like this um, to have another conversation. Um, and then obviously the people who are going to live and work in those spaces are going to have specific input um, at the ground floor level. Um, but if this uh, were passed in May, I would say that the doors of that building would probably open in the fall of 2026. And some of the other projects um, would, would follow behind us. Some of the small things could probably be done in conjunction, but um, if I were to, to target a specific end date for uh, that new building, it would be the fall of 26. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, to the busing question first, um, we've gone over all of the what ifs with our transportation department and uh, their estimation, um, and they are a, a third party entity, but their estimation is that this particular configuration would be two fewer bus runs than we currently have. So there would be some efficiency of operation related to a centralized campus. And then, you know, some of the things we haven't even discussed would be the operational savings of one campus as opposed to four in terms of grounds of maintenance and snow removal and uh, energy savings and staffing and uh, things like that. Um, if it isn't necessarily something that, that we're promoting as a reason why, but clearly your mind doesn't have to wander too far to understand that paying for one campus is cheaper than paying for so uh, looking for, for savings there. In terms of the, uh, the cost uh, for average homeowners, that will be information that we'll want to get out uh, throughout the, the campaign. I think that that's going to be something that the advocacy group will develop and make sure that uh, materials are specific to that. Thank you. Who else? Member Noggle. Yes, I'm asking for a some people that asked me to find out in light of the way we're doing home uh, schooling with our computers and everything mm -hmm. online. The virtual learning? Yep. They're wondering how this is going to affect it. If it keeps growing, is that a tendency you see keep growing more and more of it or what? Well, I, th I think as a district, you know, we have those opportunities <coughs> for students almost completely related to the pandemic. Uh, but I, I think we have to understand that there are ways in which the distance learning and the, the virtual approach uh, benefits people in lots of different ways. Uh, there are things using that format that we're good at, and there's some things that we're much better at when we're in person. Um, the technology infrastructure upgrades that, 
this proposal um, supports would, would be a big increase in our ability to do those things um, and have side-by-side -side learning. It wouldn't be a specific focus of the program, but it really could help. Would it be affect the number of students you would be able to have each year? Would it be the same number? Would you lose a few, or what? If, if kids disenroll from our from our district, uh, we certainly would lose the funding for that student. Uh, we're a leader in the county, and we've had our own virtual academy now for ten years. Uh, so we've, we've uh, done a pretty good job in supporting that. Right now, we have about 128 individuals who use the virtual academy uh, as their primary learning. Um, as we found through the pandemic, um, teaching kids from a distance from time to time when it becomes necessary is a tool that we have. And um, as a result of participating in it, we've gotten a little better uh, over time. And by 2026, could figure into our overall program. It's a possibility, yes. Okay. Trustee Tom? Okay. I, I guess. For me, from the teaching point, and I've been into the rooms a little bit, you know, as a retired person looking at the pandemic and how people teach and in other schools, I think that probably the upgrade in technology, as he said, would be immense. I see these teachers like, you know, they have to keep like a terminal like this, you know, over here where they would have more space and cameras and things that would be able to maybe I would envision being simultaneous so that they just are not at that seat, you know, so that they can do, uh, Devin can speak much more articulate than I am, but I see that some rooms have those capabilities. Many do not. And I think, I think that we probably won't have snow days in the future or any of those kind of things because we will be able to have all that interactive type of thing that can take place. And instead of seeing your teacher in the screen, you might be able to have the capability of the whole room, the science experiment, or whatever hands-on thing that's going on. That's just what I see as a teacher. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Chief Coker. Yes, yeah, before we close, I wanted to make sure that the council and uh, board just give us your your thoughts on um, either this choice two or going to choice one, um, and, and how that traffic burden or disbursement might be an advantage. Thank you. Who else? Yes, sir. It, it would cross the pathway and um, not exactly sure how to, to reconcile that. Um, I know the head end of the pathway is just a little bit north of that area. So potentially, you know, moving the head end past our bus, bus loop or, or something like that. I mean, there, there are definitely some challenges there that have to be addressed. Um, but to me, that softens the blow a little bit in that, you know, we, we may be yes. shortening okay. that pathway by uh, a couple hundred feet. We think once we get that hooked up, we all know what we can do. Right, you're right. There are, there are <coughs> lots of places where and we would be doing this uh, twice a day uh, just during the school year. Manager Swallow. Thank you, Mayor. One comment on any
Thank you. Anyone else? Anyone have thoughts on option one or two? Yes, Trustee Brooks. So um, I agree. Option two, when we, so Suzanne and I served as non voting <clears throat> members on the Building Futures Committee, and we looked at, at those options. Um, we didn't have the conceptual drawing, so it was just in discussion, but it was very important that we not end up in the position that we have with the middle school where there's so much traffic congestion during those times. Um, when I was in school, we walked. That doesn't seem to be a real, real big thing right now, especially with the weather. Maybe that plays a part in it, but there's a lot of pickup and drop off in our community. So um, another aspect of it, not only to try and help with that congestion by bringing it in from multiple points, but um, and, and giving parents a better flow as well. Uh, you also have less of an issue with parents trying to get across town from this school to that school to the other school. So that was another thing we kind of were talking about um, bringing this into one area. So definitely option two for my vote. Thank you. Who else? Um, Trustee I, Simpson. I, I, thank you, Mayor. I, I like option two, but I would also suggest that there's a, uh, feasibility study done to see what how much traffic this is actually going to bring um because 1100 students is going to be a lot of traffic and and how many students get picked up currently from the elementaries that we have and so forth to see and then probably i'm sure there's there's companies out there that do this i i don't know this isn't my thing but but um i'm sure the city can probably help with that because um this is Last thing you want to do is build it and find out the traffic isn't going to work. So, yeah. so I, I like option two, but I'm not an expert. So, we had our experience um, in 2017 and 18 um, on that Compass campus. Um, we had about 1,500 students that day. There's currently about uh, 825 students on our uh, middle school campus. Anyone else? Yes. Question on option one versus option two. Is there any, can you talk a little bit about the difference between that field and that field that they call that? Are you talking about on this site specifically? Uh, Eduardo, we, we don't have specific places located on this site plan, but we do have um, an opportunity to capture some space up here on this property, in the northeast corner, and then uh, you know some smaller spaces between the building and the bus loop. Um, so I think that that's yet to be determined. Yeah. Uh, Yes. 
Remember, we're done. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hiller, you mentioned that there was nine different options that this group looked at. Uh, were all of the nine options on school property, or was one of the nine, did it include maybe property the school doesn't currently own? No, it was all. I was on that committee. It was all school property. It was remodeling all four or putting additions on the middle school or the high school and it was two buildings on that one site and then we're like well why can't we just have one building and then we ended up looking at all those different things and it ended up being one building right and, and, and as you mentioned nothing that the committee looked at uh assumed the uh, purchase of new property did i i, I did see ron i thought did i see another arm over here in we the can audience? get that for you if they yeah. want to see that okay <clears throat> member wimple again ron wimple from the city uh, I know the Phoenix project is something that's in, in its infancy. I would hope that, you know, if this millage passes, that there would be a working communication because I think some of the things that the Phoenix is offering might also be part of what the school is looking for as far as additional athletic uh, opportunities for the residents of, of our town. Exactly, and uh, Mr. Simpson, I have had informal what if uh, sort of uh, short brainstorming sessions. It's definitely something that you know we're excited about um, the opportunities there, and, and we're this to uh, be supported by the community. I think between that project and this, uh, you know, becomes a, the, in the forefront of this region terms of uh, a place to live and raise families. Like I said, I would hope that, you know, if, if the millage passes and if Project Phoenix gets off to a, a good start, I think that would be some good communications to have. Yeah, there, there are very clear connections in our minds and probably lots of people here about how those would be able to mesh. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I do want to explain why, Superintendent Hilderly, that uh, we have well houses on school property. <laughs> that was, you, when those well houses were built, that was city property. Uh, we control the two baseball diamonds there, Nelson Field 1, Nelson Field 2. Uh, those are the two fields, I think, that you were referring to. And uh, years ago, there was a land swap made, and so uh, that's why you, the city, uh, gave up that property to the schools. That's why you have it. And we kept our rights to keep those well houses in place there. So it didn't always belong. It didn't always belong to the schools. It's not an easy thing to relocate. No, right? no, sure. <laughs> sure is it. I'd like the record to also uh, show that I used to prepare those fields for, <laughs> for uh, major ball games back in the day. As so. did, as did I. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, I played on those fields. Yeah, as did I. <laughs> we used to get yelled at by the neighbors because there was too much dust getting kicked up. So we were getting a red. So, yes. <laughs> that might have been Ryan's grandfather. <laughs> yes, it was. That might have been. It was. Yes. Anyone else? <laughs> Thank you for that great presentation, Superintendent Hillary. That Absolutely. was. Absolutely. I enjoyed talking about the, uh, the what ifs. We, we hope that this all comes together. At the like I said, um, the school is the community, and the community is the school in a in Michigan town the size of Tecumseh, and working together to make sure that we're supporting the needs of our community is exactly what we're all about. So, again, I appreciate uh, you and uh, St. Andrew Swallow reaching out to have this forum for discussion tonight. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Okay, our next presentation will be the school resource officer. Uh, the introduction will be made by Chief of Police uh, Coker, and the presentation will be made by School Resource Officer Sergeant Rogers. Chief Coker, Sergeant Rogers. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my name is Brett Coker. I'm the police chief of the Council Police Department, and I just wanted to take a moment to uh, express my gratitude to all of you in person for reinstating this position and, and this program. I believe in this program, and I call the program because, as you see by some of the information that Sergeant Rogers is going to deliver tonight, it goes far beyond just having a path to the school. So it, it is a program. So uh, I believe in the program. I believe in Sergeant Rogers. Great job and will continue to do so. And uh, I get my full support, uh, not only professionally as police chief, but also personally as a TPS parent um, to, for this program and to provide a safe learning environment for all of us. So, Sergeant Rogers, thank you.
school safety grant. Um, those that were aware prior to the school applied for the school safety grant was awarded, which is about 30 million, um, which allowed for uh, some security cameras. While security cameras provide a function, it's more reactive. Like, it's going to tell you, it's going to verify the next day that something happened. It doesn't prevent anything. And to touch on what the superintendent's talking about, when you look at new buildings versus old buildings and infrastructure, one thing that we ran into to put those cameras up is the capability of those buildings to have wiring. You know, some of those older buildings was a challenge to, uh, to add security measures because they were built at a time where those measures weren't. Uh, so that school safety grant opens up tomorrow, and we put the board out um, and work those with the assistance of the staff and work that grant at the end. Um, and as part of that is evaluating the different products. And as the superintendent outlined, you know, one of the new building or old building, there's one of the areas for improvement, and part of that is that can help fill or add in um, things to the gaps. And one of those gaps is um, something that's coming down at us, the University of that, but um, one thing that's coming down from these school instances is the ability for uh, staff to contact 911 leads. What they call it. Okay, the law is made that point of the scope of the public. Uh, and that can be achieved for a number of different measures. The easiest one will be the software. So those kind of things are being looked at as a supplement uh, to existing conditions and then to meet the requirements that I think you know, that we have for our students and staff. doing the right thing, or <laughs> reading to the graders, or what have you. Um, those are just kind of the big side things that are going on in addition to the others. Any questions? Board members, council members, President Rebatero. Uh, um, thanks for the presentation. Thank you. And thanks for the presentation. Can you explain or kind of detail how, and I know you're just coming on board here now for 30 days here this time around, but last time and in the future, how much time do you expect to spend at the other schools, the middle school, the elementary schools? Thank you. Any other board members or council members? Questions or comments for Sergeant Rogers? Member Wimble. Uh, if this millage is approved and there's a 1100 student center for the uh, K through four, could you see the need of a second officer? Yeah. 
Thank you. So, I would anticipate, you know, I mean, the need's always there. Like I said, I, there's, there's room for another piece of stuff. I don't know. Uh, the budget people probably want to do that. <laughs> probably. Uh, there's definitely enough for the more. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Moore. Um, what would you say the percentage is? Are you 80% at the high school and 20 at the middle school? And I'm assuming the elementary is there. So as it stands now in the first three weeks or up that I've been here, um, I've been primarily at the high school as far as being stationed here. Um, a lot of that time, I guess my downtime I spend working on the other stuff, the operations and so forth. Um, some of it was just getting reactivated and you know, I have to get things to you know, reassess off and so forth that I need to do. Um, but I, I have been down to Sutton probably Are there programs in the development, like say for, you know, you're talking to little kids and having a, a whole room full or maybe an auditorium full and talking about, you know, things appropriate for that age group, like stranger danger and, and what to do, you know, in certain situations, what they should do. And is there like a program or a... Trustee Tomlin. To your point, Suzanne, we have a health curriculum. We currently aren't offering it at the middle school, but when we do, there's a role for an officer to come in into the health curriculum that we have. We also have Sweet, sweet 360, which is not sweet like sweet. It's, it's a social emotional learning capability. We have it available at the high school too, if we use it, that can do surveys and take the pulse of students and have like find out what some of their needs are in terms of, you know, an issue that might come up. And um, I think that you would agree too through the health department, the health program here at the high school, there is a lot of opportunities to 
be a part of those lessons, right? You know, uh, you've come before when I've had things on inhalants and things like that. There, I think we have curriculum set up that he doesn't have to go and search out new, but he can be a partner with what we have, I think, right? Thank you. Any other board members, council members, questions or comments? Thank you, Sergeant Rogers. Thank you. <laughs> Our next presentation will be Parks and Recreation. This will be presented by Parks and Recreation Director Sarah Gilmore. Director Gilmore. Thank you, just want to check make sure it's on here. Um, thank you, Council. Thank you, School Board, uh, for the opportunity here this evening. Um, my name is Sarah Gilmore, and I'm the Parks and Recreation Director here for the City of Tecumseh. Um, we partner with the schools in a variety of ways. Um, I'll just give a quick overview of some of the things that we do, but in the three big ways, we partner uh, in sports, in the parks themselves, and then also for events. We'll start with sports because that one seems like the no-brainer. That's that's kind of the low-hanging fruit. That's an easy one. Um, I feel like I've, in, in my short time in the director role uh, here with the city, I've developed a pretty good working relationship with the athletic director, John Zajac. Um, I would hope he would say the same. Um, but we work a lot with uh, our coaches, our staffs, and and other other varsity teams in a variety of ways, like I said. Um, they help us with camps and workshops, which is important for our youth, um, especially for coaches to start to meet and understand um, what skill level they have in the lower grades or the younger ages, hopefully working into their program in the next few years. Um, we have a great working relationship with the boys soccer team. Coach Noack has been absolutely fantastic. They help us with our skills and drills uh, with our youth soccer in the spring when the boys are on their off season. And the little kids love it. They love seeing the varsity um, boys out there helping them. So that's a wonderful um, partnership just for the kids themselves to have that rapport between the two. Um, our tennis teams have been a wonderful asset for us as well, um, helping us with camps in the summer. And then also both lacrosse teams have been helping us out throughout the winter for the last couple of years, offering um, opportunities to, again, work with those younger kids and keep building their um, building their, their player base, so to speak, um, and then just also giving them an opportunity to play. With, um, with our camps and workshops, we also try and help relieve some of that pressure. We've heard a little bit about gym space usage and how much pressure that can put, especially in the winter season. Um, we've got boys and girls basketball going in a variety of other sports as well. Um, our our gym space will be used by high school teams for additional overflow, uh, excuse me, overflow practice space if needed. Um, we work with John Zajac and do hoop search programs. We've hosted there a few times. Um, we have our middle school basketball tournament actually coming uh, to the rec center this weekend, so we're getting ready for that. Um, and so this is a, a continuing relationship throughout throughout the year. Um, that's overview in, in sports with our parks. Um, our middle schoolers actually do a day of service. And while kind of 2020 was the lost year for a lot of different things, um, I'm looking forward to that starting again in the fall. Um, they come out and help us with invasive species removal. So while, yes, I oversee the A.J. Smith Rec Center here in town, I'm also in charge of all of the parks. Um, so that's actually a, a wonderful help for them to be able to get out into our parks, see what's available to them, and more importantly, we do a lesson. It's not just come on out and do some manual labor. They come out and we learn about why we're doing this. We take that opportunity for education side of it. Um, just this morning, um, I was actually in the middle school talking with seventh graders about career pathways for natural resources. 
So while, yes, they're coming out to our parks, it's actually uh, fantastic to start building that relationship to go to the classroom and visit with them. I will also say in our parks, our high schoolers are invaluable to my department in employment. They help us with refereeing, and it's a wonderful thing to watch them learn the game from a different aspect. You know, you watch a high schooler who's been playing soccer for years and years, all of a sudden they have to turn it on their head and be the referee and enforce the rules. You learn the game a, a little bit different, a uh, little different way. So they are, like I said, absolutely invaluable to us as young adults coming and learning how to work um, in our first department. Finally, um, we do partner with events. Uh, our Builders Club has been coming over um, the last few years to do um, toddler programs with us, kind of help herd the, herd the cats, uh, especially with toddlers. Um, but again, that service aspect, getting them working with young kids and volunteering. Uh, we, we will work with other um, sports teams, have team banquets, again, overflow capabilities here with us at the rec center. Um, we'll also be hosting a dance here at, uh, in March as, as a fundraiser again. Do what you have. Do what you have in your community. So for us at Parks and Rec, my, my goal and my role is how do we do the most good for the most people? And I see how my department can partner more with the schools in order to do that. Um, so future opportunities, um, my background in environmental education, so I would love to use our parks as living labs, go out into the parks and use them as part of the curriculum. I know that some teachers have done that. Uh, uh, that's one thing that I like doing. Actually, when I was in middle school here myself as a student, um, we went out and did projects in Indian Crossing Trails. And so that was one thing I think that helped spur my interest in where I am today. Mr. Moose, <laughs> um, at least part of it, right? Um, and so I just look for more collaborations here, and um, like I said, the most good for the most people, and use the resources you have, and I very much see the rec center and our parks as a way to do that. So um, I'll offer up for questions if you might have any. Right. All right, thank you, Director Gilmore. Board members, council members, questions or comments for Director Gilmore? Trustee you. Tomlin. I just want to say thank you. Um, all the opportunities for community service from a middle school standpoint and all the things that you've done, you always say, well, how can we make that work? I really appreciate everything you do. Thank you. <laughs> Trustee Lewis. Oh, thanks, of course, you know, for, for the work you're doing out here with the parks and getting the kids involved with that. And I heard the city manager talk about the, the development of paths where we get kids out and enjoy the outdoors. I mean, I think sometimes when we go so overboard with climate control, it sets up and down. You know, it's 68.8 in the, in the winter time, so it's comfortable, and then 72.2 with the right humidity. We we just don't in the summer. We just don't get kids out where they can actually explore and learn. And, and there's really nothing wrong with kids going out and getting dirty and maybe the occasional bee sting. So I, it's just it's part of what's out there and makes them aware. I, I, I'm really glad you're able to do that. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you, Director Gilmore. Our next presentation will be the Tecumseh Civic Auditorium Programming and Sharing Facility. And this would be uh, brought to you by the TCA Director Kelly Joel Gilmore.
functional performance theater that is accessible for the entire community, uh, lots of arts organizations, and has such an incredible relationship with the schools. And I think that history is important um, as we move forward. So not only today, but as we move forward as well. Um, I was not here in 1981 when the Tecumseh Point was, but not here. <laughs> Tecumseh Center for the Arts was built, and it doesn't take a lot of digging to read back through the newspapers of that time or uh, the opening program to read why Tecumseh Center for the Arts and Tecumseh Civic Auditorium was built. Um, it was a group of committed and dedicated community members from across all spectrums um, that wanted to come together and offer a home stage for the community. So our mission for the theater is to provide um, a home stage for local groups, but also be a vital part of that artistic culture. Um, and I think emphasize to the community that uh, quality of life is incredibly important. And we did that through resource officers in the schools and parks and recreation programs. And we did it through a fully performance uh, theater in the town the size of Tecumseh. So moving forward, that spirit of collaboration and partnership is what I feel is uh, vital to how we move the theater forward. And that relationship is longstanding with Tecumseh Public Schools. Um, most people know that we hold and host the concerts for Tecumseh Public Schools for the music department. In my six years, I have a great personal and professional relationship with all the music teachers. Um, prior to COVID, we held anywhere from 15 to 20 concerts a year um, for Tecumseh Public Schools. So at that time, it was uh, high school band and choir, and middle school band and choir, um, the strings concerts, all of the elementary things, uh, spring things, pre-festival concerts, um, all of those things are ways that we provide and look forward to offering that space for Tecumseh Public Schools throughout the year. Um, we were a little delayed in opening because we have a brand new HVAC system thanks to city council members at the TCA, a wonderful investment that will help us move forward. But we have 12 uh, concerts. We have two this month in February uh, and about 10 more throughout April and May. So we're excited to have the schools back in the theater. Um, so what happens when a school has a concert at the TCA? So um, the TCA is made up of four employees, myself and three other employees. And we help to play a role of support for those teachers. Um, I'm sure many of you know our teachers come in ready to put on a great program, and we provide everything from sound, light, setup, risers, music stand, chairs, uh, sound shelves. Uh, I have personally drove musical instruments back and forth between parents and patterns <laughs> <laughs> to make uh, the teachers' lives a little bit easier and provide that opportunity that we will take care of all those tech needs going on, and we're happy to do that. Um, and in that spirit of collaboration and partnership, we offer incredible discount to the schools. I think um, in one of the early papers from Shirley Herrick, um, you see that it was important for her to be involved, and she really wanted uh, that collaboration to continue um, between the theater and the public schools. So we do everything that we can to make that collaboration and partnership continue. Um, in addition to that, we have movie days. We laugh at the TCA, so I think every single one of us has the Outsiders, the movie memorized. <laughs> it's an annual movie that's held, but we usually hold about 10 to 12 movies or field trip days in the year. So you'll see them followed um, when they finish reading a book, they'll come over and watch a movie or towards the holiday times. Um, and we're happy to do that and provide all the audio visuals for that aspect so the teachers literally just have to pass off the DVDs and take care of that for them. Um, and then there's just all these other miscellaneous. I kind of add them in the agenda, <laughs> but I'm sure I missed a bunch of things. So there's just this ongoing communication with our school system. So we have done theater tours and career days on multiple occasions throughout the year. Uh, we, right before COVID happened, we worked with one of your teachers to bring Bowling Green uh, Children's Theater to the University of Bowling Green to the TCA for the day. We did several performances, which was <coughs> fabulous. Um, when we 
introduced the TC Street Art Trail and the Sculpture Garden. We have four or five uh, murals that were done by art teachers, music teachers, and the kids coming by socially distance and painting throughout the summer to put those murals on the wall and they're fabulous. Um, and like Sarah, we've done random lunch settings where I think Mr. McKinchick on more than one occasion has said, we're out, the van's out, we need a place to eat. And we're like, come to the green room. We got yet no record on the chairs and the tables. Um, the Kempsey Band Day uh, fundraiser for your boosters. Uh, so that can talk, but we've done a number of egg drops in the parking lot over the years. <laughs> uh, one thing that we did right before COVID and I hope that we continue is that we started offering uh, discounted tickets to groups. So throughout the year, we have national touring shows that come in and we bring in groups and performers from around uh, the world sometimes. So we had cast pajamas at one point in an acapella group. So we gave discount tickets to the music department for the kids to come and use the discount code. The other kids and see them even cheaper. Uh, we had a group called the Fitzgeralds, which is a fiddling group. So we had reached out to Amy Marr and had all of her violin players have an opportunity to come see that at a discounted price. And those are the type of things that I personally hope that that. We got paused by COVID, but we're excited to <coughs> continue to do that as we move forward. Like Sarah, volunteers. I don't know how we would survive without <laughs> all of our volunteers. National Honor Society kids, we have over there running concessions and ushers throughout the year. They have helped with different camps, <coughs> um, drama camps, art camps, different events. Princess Day, I've had uh, high school kids come over and do all kinds of wonderful things. Uh, art department, one of the set pieces of Nutcracker Ballet and the Chinese Dragon was created by the art students. So I look around the building and I just see all of this <coughs> collaboration that has occurred um, and continues to continue to occur moving forward. Um, like Sarah said, I don't know again how we survive without our high school employees. <laughs> we currently have six high school employees. I have four seniors. And if you know them, you're going to know how Dustin and I ended up graduating. So I have Ben Lambert and Caleb Albright and Kate Dan and uh, Abby <coughs> Martin. They're fabulous students. And honestly, if I wouldn't have had them the last two years, I don't think I ever would have had virtual streets to take off the way that it did. But they came in and told me how to get it done, and we got it done. Um, but the student tech program where we hire student tech technicians to help us run our event, we had 170 high school students from Tecumseh be trained in the last two decades at Tecumseh Center of Great Arts. And some of those kids do not do theater or go on to do anything you know, with theater afterwards, but they are so connected and passionate about that experience. I know Austin C was a theater kid at one point, so he knows what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have other kids that are certainly currently being in the spotlight for Disney on the Ice or uh, stage management in New York. So it's such a rich history to have that connection with so many different um, to come to public school kids. Uh, future collaborations, I'm kind of with Sarah. I think there's a lot of ways that we can continue to collaborate uh, from future concerts and programs and events. And one thing that I would like to see is a way to offer more workshops. Um, in November, we had a a gentleman who is a talented uh, pianist. He performed Shakespeare and Jazz with a big band, most of us had a big band. It's a fabulous show. And while they were there talking to me, he was like, if you ever bring me back, we would love to work a workshop at your local school district. And sometimes it takes one of those conversations to have a light bulb moment go off. But there are so many times that we have these national groups come in that we could collaborate and have them in a day early with these workshops for school system. So personally, I hope that's something we can do. Um, and then the, the TCA Music Park is, will continue to expand with um, the Sculpture Garden, the Art Trail, our next collaboration. My uh, sister-in-law, Sarah, and I are going to collaborate and expand that to Bird Park uh, with the Music Park, Outdoor Musical Instruments, and in all of those things being situated across from the middle school, I think that there's wonderful ways for teachers and administration to use that space. Be on the TCA grounds and collaborate in many ways as possible. So that's my story. I'm going to stick with it. <laughs>
<laughs> thank you. Well, thank that. you, Director Gilmore. Board members, council members, Trustee Moore. Yes. Um, I went to Lincoln Schools a long time ago, but we had a, a theater and we had a drama classes. Do, does the high school offer drama classes? And like we would do, I think if, if I had drama one time a semester, we did two plays and of course we practiced in our drama class and we had, you know, we learned about the theater and then we actually went there and practiced and and we performed for the other students. So if we did something that was more geared towards the older kids, they would come and watch. And then we also did like the Wizard of Oz one time and all the little kids watched. We work very closely with the Comedy Youth Theater. Um, who puts on two to three productions a year. In fact, uh, it's open to the entire county for to come see the theater, but it's predominantly usually to come see students. But not through the school. It's There's no drama. The, okay. There's not through the school. Um, but like descendants, And then the high school, um, again, it's predominantly to come see high school students, but there's some foot loose in March. So it's a great, great show. We're excited to work with them throughout the year. Anyone else? Thank you, Director Gilmore. Thank you. We are now at item number eight. This is public comment. This will be for items that were not on this evening's agenda. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to address this group regarding items that were not on the agenda this evening, this is your opportunity. Yes, go right ahead. Thank you, sir. Anyone else for items that were not on the agenda? This is your opportunity. Okay, I will ask the board members and the council members for any comments or questions that they may have at this time. I would like to do this more often. <laughs> Thank you, Trustee Moore. You're welcome. Yes, it has been a, a while since we have yes. had this. We have had these in the past, and uh, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. I would like to have them more often also. Yes, ma'am. Trustee Brooks. Can I tell you, Mr. Dan, I really appreciate you taking the time to join us today and to especially look over the broad issue. Um, again, I was like set on that committee, and it was a pretty amazing process. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time to look at it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. President Robert Carroll. All right. Well, I have just two comments. First, uh, really. I mean, maybe, maybe addresses what Mr. Reisling had to say. You know, obviously, the, the comment you asked about uh, uh, students leaving or coming, I mean, I will assure you that's something that personally is on my mind, and I could share that it is on everyone's mind here. And when I think about that, you know, I really think that it's a three, like any good business organization, it's kind of three-legged approach or a stool, right? And certainly curriculum is important, right? And I think if you look back, maybe that had something to do with maybe some of the students leaving. But I can assure you we've addressed that. We, as um, I don't know, Mary or somebody said, like we, we were we had a, a strategic planning session a couple of Saturdays ago. And, and the thing that probably was most visible out of that is that we need to do more of that. We need to expand our curriculum. I mean, I, but I will tell you that people come here because of the arts, right? We have, I, I met with a guy, a person the other day who told me their child is here because of the arts. So we need to expand that. But the so curriculum, but buildings is certainly part of it, right? I, I mentioned in the recent profile that in the paper, you know, that's kind of dressing for success, right? We're all up here with, with the sport coats or dresses or nice outfits on. And I think it's important when you're presenting to the public and the people that are coming from outside of this uh, is this uh, community that we look we look good. We look like a professional organization. Of course, then the last is the staff and staff's very important to us. And we've made great strides in the last year uh, with the contracts and, and, and trying to build that trust again. So uh, you asked the question, I wanted to directly address that. That is something that the board thinks about all the time. And then lastly, real quick, just thanks, Mr. Swallows and and um, and um, Rick and Jack for putting this together, it's great. And we, we need, definitely need to do it on an annual basis. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? 
school staff or city staff have any comments that they would like to make at this time? Okay. Well, before we adjourn, I would just like to share my thanks. I want to begin by thanking the school board members for affording us this opportunity and your attendance. I certainly want to thank the council members for being here this evening. I especially want to thank the Tecumseh Public Schools staff, certainly our city staff, and equally important, I want to thank the audience that's here this evening. Thank you for taking two hours out of your evening to, to show up here. And I also want to thank the online guests that are here this evening, or they're observing this evening. That's very important to me. Much like, Super, or much like uh, President Revatero said, I want to give special thanks to Superintendent Hildery, certainly to City Manager Swallow, for their preparation for this workshop. And I personally want to thank you, President Rebatero, for affording me this opportunity. This makes me very proud this evening that I can sit here with 14 elected officials who work in harmony together. And I think we sent a strong statement to this community this evening, and it was not really my purpose to do that, but I think can't help but think that we sent a very strong statement to this community. Two things. One, the schools need the city. Secondly, the city definitely needs the schools. And together, we will do great things. And I'm proud to be a part of it. With that being said, adjournment would be in order. So, so moved. moved. Motion. Motion by Member Harmon, and second by Trustee Moore. Right. Yes, to adjourn. Those in favor of the motion, yes? Yes. yes. Those opposed, no. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. Pleasure to sit by.